Hello, this is a video on surface area. There'll be another video on surface integral. Let's introduce the idea by going back. When we integrate in single variable calculus, what we're calculating is the area under the curve above the x-axis between x equals a and x equals b. We went from this to a double integral, and it can also be used to calculate area. When the integrand is a one and a double integral, it represents the area of the region in the xy plane, denoted by capital R. Now, double integrals are generally gonna have something other than a one as the integrand. And so they'll be used to calculate volume under the surface f of xy and above the region r in the xy plane. Okay, great. What we're gonna do with this is now do the same thing with the surface integral, with a line integral, sorry. So we had two different views of a line integral. Let's go back to the view of the shower curtain area. It's the function f of xy, who is a surface, and we have a curve in the xy plane or perhaps even in three space. And we find the area under the surface and above the curve. So now what we're gonna do is exactly as we've done before, I want you to think about now having a double line integral. What it's called officially is a surface integral, and let me explain further. If the integrand is a one, in a double line integral, a, a surface integral, it's gonna measure surface area. We'll talk about ds in a second. Um, when there's a function other than one inside, then generically it's called a surface integral. That function g of x, y, and z represents um, an actual surface, and we're finding the surface integral above, um, on, on some surface, capital S. Uh, what ds represents is a small piece of surface, infinitesimally small, like dA represents a small piece of the interval. And so, um, small piece of the region in, in the xy plane. Uh, sometimes ds is written as d sigma, okay? And so imagine this, we have a surface and we cut it into small patches. Each one of these is itself a small piece of surface, a ds. And it's like we're summing over the entire surface. So we have many of these and it's like a double summation. And so it is a double, think about it, it's like a double line integral. We have a curve, we have another curve, and we mix a patch of a surface and we are integrating over this entire surface. Now ds takes on different um, values depending on how the function comes at you. The formula for ds changes based on how the formula comes at you. If the formula comes at you in a standard kind of a way where z is a function of x and y, that's called an explicitly defined function. So ds then is found by taking partials of your function with respect to x and y, squaring, adding one, taking the square root, and you can find then um, that square root gets multiplied by dA, a piece of area, and we'll find that area in the shadow region of the surface in the xy plane. So then the function could come at you in other ways though. The function could come at you as an implicitly defined function. Well, the xy's and z's are so intermingled in, there's no way to solve for z as a function of x and y. And in that case, then, we have ds takes on a very different character. We have to take the gradient of f, and we have to find a p, and, um, the, which represents the normal to our, to our surface. And lastly, surface, the, uh, the, the function, the surface could come at you in a way that is parametrically defined. So a curve is parametrically defined, a single variable um, par parametrization is a curve. And think about a double variable parametrization as being uh, a surface. 
what we have is a, a function of u and v in the x coordinate, a function of u and v in the y, a function of u and v in the z. And it represents parametrically defined surface. And then what the um, ds is, a piece of a patch of the surface area there, is represented by taking a cross product between your s partial and your, your u partial and your v partial, and taking a magnitude of that cross product. And so in different videos, we explore each one of these. Um, for, the con for the concept that I want to focus on the most, though, I'm going to um, have you for sure understand what's going on with the explicitly defined functions. And so what's, what's to come next is surface area and the formula for it, and then a calculation example with an explicitly defined function. In other videos, we'll look at implicitly defined function and parametrically defined functions. And so we're looking at surface area for an explicitly defined function. We've said in the previous slide that explicitly defined function is z is a function of x and y. And what happens is we'll have a projection onto the xy plane. That's our region r in the xy plane. It doesn't have to be a rectangle like this, but in general. And so then surface area is found by doing a double integral over the shadow region in the xy plane with the integrand being a one and then ds. And ds, when you're explicitly defined, is you take the x partial you square, you take the y partial you square, you add one, you take a square root, and you multiply that by da. So that's our formula. We gotta make sure that, you know, provided that these partials exist and they're continuous on the region, then we can be able to do this. And now let's see an example. We have a surface that is a cone. And we want a patch of the surface area. We want the patch of the surface area, we want to calculate the surface area of the patch that is above a disk in the xy plane. Uh, in xy plane, we have a disk that's centered at one zero with the radius of one, unit disk. And so this is a shadow, and we want to lift that shadow up and see some kind of a shape on the cone and be able to calculate the surface area of that shape. All right, so then we must uh, recognize that the function is Define explicitly z is a function of x and y. And so when that's the case, we have our formula. Take an x partial, take a y partial, square them, add them, add one, take a square root. ds is represented by the square root of 1 plus fx squared and fy squared, da. Okay, great. So our function for us, the f function here, is 1 half the square root of x squared plus y squared. Take the x partial. Keep the half. Ultimately, we have a square root. The derivative of a square root is one over two times that same square root. Chain rule comes in and says, take the derivative of the inside function, but with respect to x, so times two x. And what's gonna happen? We're gonna cancel. These twos will cancel. And we'd have one half. I'll just go ahead and put the x on top of the rat. That's your x partial. Y partial is not gonna look different. It's gonna be the same except it's going to be y on top of that. We need to square these guys. We just square the top, square the bottom. Works out nicely. Don't forget to square the two. Same thing for the y partial squared. It's our job to add these together. Well, they add together nicely because they have the same denominator. And so what's, what, watch what happens when they add together. We have an x squared plus y squared now in the numerator and in the denominator. That's beautiful. It cancels out nicely. And we end up with one plus a fourth. We end up with a constant. It's great when the uh, radical part of ds is a constant. It's great. Because when we go to the formula, we just put the, that part in, which is a constant. We can pull it out. And then what's nice is that, um, look at the visual here. We have the, uh, the cone. We have the circle of radius one centered at one. And what we're doing is calculating the, the patch here that is on the surface and above that circle. And so when we get down to R in this formula, it's just gonna be using the circle of radius one centered at one zero. And what's nice about this, when you pull that constant out, you're looking exactly at the area of that region. Radius one circle has an area of pi. We want the full circle too. And so 
then the answer to this question is just root five over two times pi. You don't actually have to do a double integral. Root five over two times pi, okay? This is what happens when you have an explicitly defined function and you want to calculate surface area. Okay, other videos will look at implicitly defined functions and parametrically defined functions, but what we're calculating is the surface area. Other videos will look at surface integrals when there's more than just the one in the integrand. Okay, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. Uh, put a comment down below if you have any questions. And uh, stay tuned for the next video.